Hello and welcome. Uh, this is Kevin, also known as AWOL, and let me just grab some stuff here. A couple of my bins with uh, already pre-cut string out of my new cart that I'm enjoying so much. And we are going to need basically eight strands. So let's see, it's uh, eight brown and eight red, and it turns out there's my eight brown and eight red. Now, I was originally thinking that I might mix up the different shades and stuff, but uh, it actually turned out that I actually had eight that are all matching. So, with that, I can put away the totes and get right into this. Now, um, I'm sure that you've seen from the um, thumbnail, if you, you know, came in by that way, that this is all about um, David Brown, or uh, Dave, I guess, uh, on his uh, Instagram it says. So uh, he's also known as Boy in a Band. Um, lately here, I just crank up his songs whenever they come on um, my Spotify account. So I thought, you know, this would be like a great tribute to him and, and just say I totally get it. Depression is a serious thing. I, I too have been affected by it. So I wanted to do something kind of in his honor. And if I can get a hold of him, I'd like to actually send this to him. So, And I'm shooting all of this intro part here in real time. So you can kind of get an idea that if you get organized and you have the materials together, how much quicker it is to actually put something together, right? Um, I know that I use a lot of time lapse to help kind of move things along, um, but I actually kind of want to show you that, you know, with a bit of organization, this is not too terrible. All right, so kind of get all these strands out. Essentially what I'm going to have to do at this point is because I am going to double up my string, um, I need to find the, the center point of both of these colors. And because we're separating out the strings, my choice of how I'm going to start this is a bit different. So what I've done is this is the center of the red and I've made a really big fat loop there just so that way it's really easy for me to put the brown through that loop. Now grabbing the brown, putting it through, and then the cent I'll find the center, and like basically I'm just putting the two ends together. There you go. And I will go ahead and shift that upwards to uh, basically just make it easier, a little bit more secured. Starting with the brown side, um, I'm going to take Essentially, it's one strand. I'm not sure I necessarily got both from the same side, but taking one strand and I'm going to do, I guess it's the backwards four over the whole group. I could have gone the other direction. That part really didn't matter, but I'm going to go for the set duration. I think on this one, it was 19 millimeters is what I kind of gauged it out. I'll do a video later on for you um, in regards to that how I figured out how long I should make the loop. But here, um, I just keep repeating the same thing. Now, normally, if I wasn't forcing it to the side as I am, this would make the sort of spiral. But I kind of was really forcing it to go over to that one side. And so it stays relatively straight. So that's that. Um, Let's see, what else can I tell you about this? Oh, so once I basically have my 19 millimeters of this, I'm using my calipers to actually measure it. And uh, just takes a couple more. I can now then go and set that one aside and then do the next one, right? Like grab off two more strands. Because again, like I said, the string is doubled up, right? And then that goes over the whole rest of the group. 
and so on and so on. So this is just like how you normally get my nice clean starts. I'm already actually, because it's already, strings already laid out conveniently for this, I can go ahead and do this. Now, I don't do that on the other side because I want to use a little bit of caution and you'll see I almost made a mistake of the direction I was going to send it because for this one, this is basically starting as a teardrop. Like basically, if you turn the bracelet sort of upside down, you'll see that it's a, like a teardrop shape. Um, so it gets a little bit tricky and the easy way of doing this is to make sure you have things kind of set up properly. But since this is the first side, it really doesn't matter um, because the second side is the one that has to mirror it. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so let's see, that's all for this one. Now I have to just turn it around. And basically now we're gonna do the same exact thing with this side. Now I thought I was being clever and was gonna to try to do it where the other side was the backwards four, do this as the regular uh, four. But it turns out that's not necessarily the right way of doing it. And I was able to actually correct that by just giving a little bit of a twist. It didn't really matter. But um, I could have kept this going in the same direction as the first one was. So. Um, but yeah, I made sure that I, when I started, I really snug. I wanted to make sure that it kind of covers that center best as I could. So you can see that that was the, the gist of that. So again, this one, mind you, let's see, um, the bracelet itself is, I have a ruler here, is about 24 millimeters wide. So, um, yeah, if that helps you, with, if you're trying to gauge up to do this thing, it's eight strands of the brown and eight strands of the red. And when you double it up, because they're both on the same side, you still end up with the same number, eight and eight. Okay. And I obviously have to check the measurement. And that pair of calipers, those were cheap. Those was a $2 plastic set of calipers. Um, I highly recommend it. I think that um, everybody should have one essentially because they are incredibly useful, especially on stuff like this. It's, it's, you can set it to the size you want it to be, and like how I had that open, and it just made it a whole lot easier. So definitely recommend that. So you can see here, I'm now setting it in, in the direction it's supposed to go. And you can see this first one right out the bat. Oh, that's the wrong direction. And as I go to pull out the second string, you can see I suddenly realized the error of my ways and oh, there it goes. And then it's time to grab the needle. Always keep a needle close by, you know, mistakes happen. It's part of the thing. And you want those blunt needles. You don't want a sharp sewing needle because if you use something sharp, you can stab the fibers. And if you do that too many times, you will have weakened it and your bracelet will not last. So just a tip from somebody who's been doing this a really long time. Mind you, any time that you can avoid jabbing, you know, stuff with your your floss, it's, uh, it's just going to help the overall longevity. So. so now at this point, it just, the, the grouping gets smaller and smaller, two strands each time as we get this, the string prepped and ready to go. So essentially, if you hadn't already guessed this, the big trick of this is the fact that, um, we're going to keep the red always on the left hand side and the brown is always on the right hand side. And to do this is essentially we're, we're just coming down as though it's a chevron 
And it's that last knot that makes all the difference. And how we do it is first it goes to the left and then to the right. All right. And that is essentially all there is to this whole pattern. And, and I'll show this. I'll, I'll try. I'll zoom in and everything to kind of give you a better idea how that works. But um, that is the gist of the pattern. Somebody had been asking about this recently over on Facebook. And I think they were, it might have been for black and white or whatever it was. White have even been like six colors on one side and six on the other and trying to keep them separate like this. And uh, I realized that, you know, actually I could do a tutorial and it could be for this, which is something I was already thinking about doing. So kind of a two birds with one stone sort of thing. Because, um, yeah, I really... I really like the messages in the the uh, Dave's band. It's, it's kind of fun. So, And plus he has some good videos, so you can guys check that out if you're not familiar with him. I'll have links for his Instagram as well as his YouTube in the description. So, anyways. So you can see, just bringing the first row down. Um... And it is, it's just that right here, this is essentially what, just uh, the candy stripe, right? And then I'm going to go even over the last strand. Right there. And then it's time to bring the brown ones down. Now this bracelet itself, I basically I'm, I'm I've put it up here as an easy, even though it does have that zigzag knot in the middle. But I think um, you can. I think anybody should be able to get this pretty much first try. So um, hopefully, hopefully you guys don't have any trouble. If you do, leave me a comment. Um, I'll try to help you. I'm not thinking too many people have a difficulty with this. And, and I think this is going to actually open up some other possibilities as far as like setting up the colors and stuff like that. I mean, basically, if I was going to do, if I wanted a teardrop start and make something like, say, a French flag or something, I think I would pretty much do it the same way, or a Russian flag for that matter, um, right? Because you just have the three stripes. So you would have whatever the center color is coming on to both sides and then the two other colors would be one separated to the left and one separated to the right so real real easy way of accomplishing something of that nature so again if you use your imagination if you look at how this is done and a bit of imagination you can take this and do a whole lot more all right so here i'm going to join the two sides you can see i adjusted the clip and then it's starts to the left and then it goes to the right and you'll see that the red now is back to the side with the reds and the brown stayed to the side with the browns and i just bring the red down again and uh, here, let's zoom in there you go see that so essentially every row ends with the brown doing the left and then the right so I'm going to do a couple more rows here for you. And then I will show you how we finish this. It's kind of fun when you look at it at this kind of level of zoom. You can just see how fuzzy the strands actually are. It's kind of neat. Now at this point, you can see that by using tension, um, I'm getting parts of the, the directional, that diagonal part is starting to straighten up. And that's exactly how it should be. And that's what how I basically control it and get such a nice straight bracelet as I'm going. It's, it's about using the tension to, to give it the shape needed. It's a pretty tight knot, although um, I certainly could tug it tighter than I, than that is. So it's, it's firm, but not crazy. 
on something like this, the one, <laughs> the one thing I do say about like when you have the solid group of colors like this is, um, I do sort of rely heavily on, like, say if it's a rainbow, right? Being able to know which of the next two strands based on the color. But when it's, they're all the same color, I have to actually concentrate and look much closer to make sure that I'm picking up the correct two because that's how it would be really easy to make a mistake on something like this is, you know, they're, they're all the same, right? So you just grab whatever, um, that, that's probably the easiest way of making a mistake on this one or getting to the center point and forgetting to do the left and the right. So here it comes. So we obviously we were coming down to the left, half of the left, and now going to the right. And there it is. Rel like I said, it's a relatively simple design. Um, but it's a fun effect. I think for the people who tend to buy bracelets, they're not going to look at this and think, oh, wow, that's so easy. You know, I, I don't want to pay much for it. They're going to look at this and be like, wow, you managed to keep all the colors from one side or to the other side. That's pretty clever. So hopefully that's um, something that, you know, will happen at least and they'll appreciate it. I mean, I certainly wouldn't want Dave thinking, you know, that I, I try to send him some kind of rubbish because that would, uh, that wouldn't be nice. All right. Almost got this red row down here. And now I did have, I do have a friend who says that doubling up the strings is problematic for her and I'm not sure why to me this is relatively simple like they stay together in these groups but it could be just more or less a familiarity with it so um, you, let me, you guys let me know what do you guys what's your take on this do you find that doubling up the strings is easier or more difficult or what do you think? For me, I like it. I like the thickness of the product when it's done. It's, uh, there's more fibers per, for the whole overall layer. So they last a really long time. And especially if it's for a guy, I think it's just a little bit more masculine, but even for the, the, the ladies bracelets, um, it's still, I don't know. I, I like it personally. So, all right, and here we go. It's the left and then to the right. There you have it. Okay, so after a couple hours of working, I basically, following that same exact routine, got down to this point. So now it's basically just, I, I don't even know why I even bother with this. It's the same thing I always do, but I suspect maybe that there are some people, this is the first time of seeing my work. So I guess I, for them. All right. So basically here I'm doing the backwards four or a, a left hand knot. And then I take everyone that I've done that to and group them together. So it starts out with two, then three, then four, all the way down. And that gives a nice clean triangular end to the bracelet. Um, and if you do this on the start and the end, it will look a whole lot better than just, you know, just a, a stopping it and putting into a braid or whatever. And mind you, I did braid these. Um, one of the browns, when I had started it, I got them off-centered, which made for one of the strains to be relatively short. I had considered possibly doing a kumi, but since one of them was kind of short and it wasn't really going to work out, I didn't see doing the red side and not the brown side. So 
it just ends up with a braid. And that's really not the focus of the bracelet anyways, so I'm kind of cool with that. All right, so this side, it's the figure four, right? So if we're on the right, it's the figure four. If we're on the left, it's the backwards one. And you can see just grouping them and going to the next part. Um, I could have ended this where they came outwards, you know, sort of uh, like how the front the top half is sort of like a got a V shape. I could have mimicked that. But since it was already coming down to a diamond, I really kind of thought I would just keep it the way that it is. Kind of like it the way it is, actually. So, plus I think it's going to make it so that it ties really nice. Mind you, because all of the knots were actually in the same directions, with the exception of the center, the back of this bracelet turned out really well. So this one would actually look really good, kind of either front or back. Most of the time I don't care for it, you know, because most of my patterns are, you know, more complicated, zigzags and whatnot. So I tend to stay away from the back sides of the bracelet. In fact, it drives me insane when people are posting the, their photos and they have the, the wrong sides of it. Like, oh, look, I just, a friend gave me a new bracelet. And then they show the wrong side. It's like, oh, that poor artist. <laughs> I, I don't know why I take it so hard, but I do. So it is what it is, I guess. <laughs> Actually, I remember a few times back when I lived in Detroit selling a bracelet. Um, you end up with somebody who is like, you know, putting it on upside down. I'm like, no, no, that's the wrong side. And they're like, no, no, that's the way I want it. <laughs> I'd have to kind of grind my teeth a bit. So, yeah, whatever. It's, if I guess they bought it, they can do whatever. But it used to, it did used to bother me pretty bad. Okay, so here's how I put the knot at the end. I just create a loop and pull it through. I'm still waiting for somebody to tell me what that's called. I, I'm sure there's has to... It's like every knot has a name. Unlike bracelets, I don't think that bracelets should necessarily have names. I, I don't, I get confused by that because, you know, like who, who gets to do the naming to these things? It just doesn't, I don't know. The little things that go through my head here, you, now you're privy to it because you watched into this far into the, the whole bracelet making. So that's your, your bonus tracks right there. So, anyway, uh, just get this braid done, and then I will knot up the other side. Quick snip, and this is a completed bracelet. So, again, if you have any kind of questions, Leave it in the comments. I will try to get back to you. I may not have all the answers, but I will do what I can to help. Um, and if I don't actually know, I'll at least try to point you in the right direction or help find somebody who might be able to answer for you. All right, there we go. There's the loop. Let's pull that together in a little knot. I like to actually do the knot right over the braid like that. Just I think it looks better. And quick snip with my scissors. There we have it. Okay, so there we have it. Let's uh, kind of zoom in on this a little bit. And this is what it looks like. So this is this is why they call it a teardrop because you know I guess that sort of looks like it. Um, we kept the red to the one side, brown to the other. The alternative to this would be like I was saying. If you put in, so let's say you wanted it um, red, white, and blue, you would put the red to the one side with a bit of white, the blue to this side with a bit of white, the white would stay in the middle, then you could have it, the stripes like this. If I were to do that, I would have started with the white for a bit of here before doing the red, a bit of white before doing the blue, and that way the loop would have matched the rest of the project. Um, oh, I was talking about the back. I think that actually turns out looking pretty cool. So 
Um, yeah, it's nice clean look. You can see this cut tapers in really nice. The top turns out really well. Not much more I can really tell you about this. I mean, other than the fact that, yeah, I mean, if you wanted to have pastels on one side and bright on the other, there's an alternative. This has got eight strands each, so you could have um, an elongated rainbow where, you know, two colors basically get um, added in, tw you know, twice. Or you could reduce it down, six on each side. You know, the, the possibilities are relatively endless when it comes to this. And that's the biggest thing I really want to teach when it comes to the bracelet making is the fact that there are endless choices and they are up to you and don't just follow a pattern make something find inspiration out there like for me this was inspired by boy in a band his hair is brown on one side and red on the other i thought you know what <laughs> that's a that would be really cool and there it is so all right that's it for now so until next time don't get your strings in a bunch <laughs>